Hi, welcome to Sunil Maths Tutorial. Functional Analysis, Class Number 31. Let us see. Functional Analysis, Class Number 31. In this video, we learn Swarj inequality in Hilbert spaces and also one theorem. So let us see the statement of Swarj inequality. If x and y are two vectors x and y are two vectors in a hilbert space then then mod inner product of x comma y is less than or equals to norm x into norm y this is the statement of swarj inequality in hilbert spaces I repeat the statement, observe that if x and y are two vectors in the Hilbert space, then mod inner product of x comma y less than or equal to norm x into norm y. So we prove this statement here. Let us see the proof. One of the very very important theorem, important question for your examination. Let us see, suppose, or if, if y is equals to 0. If y is equals to 0, then inner product of x comma y is equals to inner product of x comma 0. This is nothing but 0. In a similar manner, if y is equals to 0, then norm y is also equivalent to 0. Then, norm x into norm y is equals to norm x into 0 which is again clearly equivalent to 0. So you see there inner product of x comma y 0 norm x into norm y 0. Therefore from this you conclude that inner product of x comma y is equals to norm x into norm y. So whenever y is equals to 0, whenever y is equals to 0, the statement is trivially true. The statement is trivially true. Therefore, therefore, the result or the statement or the statement is true in this case. In this case. Now let us take that y not equals to 0 I mean non zero vector <laughs> if y not equals to 0 then obviously norm y is also not equals to 0 norm y is also not equals to 0 take a scalar alpha belongs to C take a scalar alpha belongs to C now consider one inner product like this inner product of x plus alpha y comma x plus alpha y it is trivially greater than or equals to 0 by using the definition of Hilbert space by using the definition of Hilbert space inner product of x plus alpha y comma x plus alpha y must greater than or equals to 0 now apply the linear property this can be written as x comma x plus alpha y plus alpha y comma x plus alpha y greater than or equals to 0. Again, this inner product can be written like this. Inner product of x comma x inner product of x comma x plus inner product of x comma alpha y plus inner product of alpha y comma x plus inner product of alpha y comma alpha y greater than or equals to 0. This condition implies as inner product of x comma x plus <coughs> alpha bar inner product of x comma y this one. Here alpha is coefficient for second vector. So if you, then you can write like this alpha bar into inner product of x comma y plus alpha into inner product of y comma x plus here alpha is coefficient for first term and coefficient for 
second term so it can be written like this alpha alpha bar inner product of y comma y greater than or equals to zero so everybody knows that simple calculations are there inner product of x comma x norm x square plus norm x square plus alpha bar x comma y plus alpha inner product of y comma x plus alpha into alpha bar mod alpha square into norm y square greater than or equals to zero now substitute or replace alpha the scalar put alpha is equals to minus into inner product of x comma y by norm y square i substitute alpha as minus into inner product of alpha comma x comma y divided by norm y square so then alpha bar is equals to this condition implies as norm x square plus alpha bar minus x comma y bar by minus x comma y bar by norm y square into inner product of x comma y minus inner product of x comma y by norm y square into inner product of y comma x plus mod alpha square mod alpha square mod inner product of x comma y square by norm y square whole square into inner norm y square greater than or equals to zero now you see here norm y square and norm y square they get cancelled okay it cancelled the second term norm x square you see that inner product of x comma y inner product of x comma y bar this term i mean it is in the form of z comma z z into z bar z comma z sorry z into z bar mod z square so you can write like this minus inner product of x comma y or mod inner product of x comma y by y square norm y square minus inner product of x comma y here this inner product of y comma x can be written as inner product of x comma y bar divided by norm y square plus mod inner product of x comma y square divided by already one norm square get cancel you simply get norm square is greater than or equals to zero again from this you can write like this norm x square minus mod inner product of x comma y square by norm y square minus mod inner product of x comma y square by norm y square plus mod inner product of x comma y square by norm y square greater than or equals to zero now you see here these two terms are same with opposite signs one is positive the second one is negative so they get cancelled so right go for next one norm x square minus mod inner product of x comma y inner product of x comma y square by norm y square greater than or equals to zero here here it is x comma y x comma y so this is nothing but norm x square into norm y square minus mod inner product of x comma y square by norm y square greater than or equals to zero so this is nothing but norm x into norm y whole square minus mod inner product of x comma y whole square greater than or equals to zero this is nothing but norm x norm y whole square greater than or equals to mod inner product of x comma y whole square remove the square on both sides remove the square on both sides you simply get you simply get norm x into norm y greater than or equals to 
mod inner product of x comma y that is mod inner product of x comma y is less than or equals to norm x into norm y so in this case also the statement is true from these two cases we prove that if y is equals to 0 we prove the same inequality if y not equals to 0 we prove the same condition hence we conclude that hence we conclude that mod <coughs> inner product of x comma y is always less than or equals to norm x into norm y for all x comma y belongs to the hilbert space and alpha is a scalar belongs to capital c this completes the proof of the hilbert space so right this completes the proof of the Schwarz inequality, not Hilbert space. Schwarz inequality in Hilbert space. I am sorry. Right. We go for next theorem. A simple theorem. We finish it. The statement of the theorem is in a Hilbert space, in a Hilbert space, the inner product, in a Hilbert space, the inner product is jointly continuous is jointly continuous in a hilbert space the inner product is jointly continuous what it means what it means that is xn converges to x yn converges to y together implies together implies the inner product of xn comma yn converges to inner product of x comma y if there is a sequence xn converging to x and yn converges to y then together they together converges to x comma y so we prove this statement in this video let us say now consider to prove this consider mod inner product of xn comma yn minus x comma y is less than or equals to is less than or equals to mod inner product of xn comma yn minus xn comma y xn comma y plus again xn comma y i add the same term and subtract the same term i add xn comma y i add, i subtract xn comma y minus inner product of x comma y so clearly this is less than or equals to mod xn comma yn minus xn comma y plus mod xn comma y xn comma y minus x comma y minus x comma y which is less than or equals to this can be written as which is less than or equals to mod inner product of xn comma yn minus y plus inner product of xn minus x comma y so this is less than or equals to norm xn into norm yn minus y plus norm xn minus x into norm y norm y also we know that also we know that yn converges to y it means norm yn converges to norm y it means norm yn minus y converges to zero similarly norm xn minus x converges to zero so here it is this term is zero and here it is this term is also zero if both the terms is zero this completely less than or equals to zero it means what is in the left side we have what is in the left side we have mod xn minus y sorry mod ordered pair xn comma yn minus x comma y is less than or equals to zero this shows us the sequence xn comma yn converges to x comma y the sequence xn comma yn converges to x comma y because mod is always greater than or equals to zero mod is always greater than or equals to zero so this inequality is also greater than or equals to zero hence xn comma yn converges to zero as n tends to infinity from this we conclude that from this we conclude that the inner product in the in 
from this we conclude that the inner product is jointly continuous is jointly continuous it means if there is a sequence converges to x and another sequence y n converges to y then these two sequences together inner product of inner product of x n comma y n jointly converges to the inner product of x comma y this completes the proof of the theorem that's it in the next video we learn one more theorem which is known as parallelogram law and polarization identity one in the next video we learn the two two theorems parallelogram law and polarization identity in hilbert spaces keep learning wish you all the best